What is going on, everyone? I'm over at Seattle Airport, and I'm about to get on my plane for the Cubix 2025 conference. I just recently put out an article, and I wanted to go over the Cubix 2025 conference and kind of what this means for the quantum industry. So I kind of find a quiet corner over here, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, jump right into article coverage. And then for those of you who are interested, um, I did process just a quick and dirty process on some of my photos from Kauai and I'll, I'll share some of my photography from Kauai for those who are interested, but I'll leave that till the end. So y'all can sign off if that doesn't interest you. All right. So if you head over to the quantum bowl.com and click on news, currently the first article is Qubits 2025. D-Wave's chance to take back the mic and momentum. I'm just going to kind of go through the article. And then, of course, uh, I think the, the stakes are pretty high for this particular conference, especially with NVIDIA GTC not going that well. So I'm very eager to see what happens at the keynote. And so we know that just a week ago, Dr. Alan Baratz took the stage at NVIDIA. And the first ever NVIDIA quantum computing track. And Jensen Huang led this panel of many quantum computing companies and experts, um, whether it was CFO, CEOs, and there was some interesting conversation that happened at this panel. Um, largely, my reaction was that the panel was a little bit uh, dry and it didn't really focus um, on the future as much as I would like to have seen. Um, it got too bogged down in the technical jargon a little bit. So um, we saw that investors responded to this conference, this highly anticipated conference, a little bit negatively because stocks have sold off. So, so we know that this particular conference now... D-Wave has the microphone again. And what is great about D-Wave having that microphone is that they're going to be able to really control the narrative. Um, I feel like at NVIDIA GTC, we had Jensen really talking a lot about, um, oh, we should view a quantum computer as an instrument and not an actual computer. And that's where the confusion is. And um, it didn't really feel like quantum computing was taken super seriously in that panel. Um, and it left me a little bit confused. So if we go down the article, um, we remember Jensen had said in this panel, you know, this is the first event in history where a company CEO invited all the guests to explain why he was wrong. Um, then he's talking about his January remarks about quantum computing, where we are and where we're headed. And he was talking specifically in this about how when he made the comments about quantum computing 10, 15, or 20 years away and how it affected publicly traded stocks. So... I've covered this on the channel. Definitely take a look at a couple of my recent videos. But Alan was pretty blunt. I don't think this event was very helpful to the industry or D-Wave. So overall, that led to a missed opportunity. And the article kind of goes on to talk about anticipation and how investors and maybe the public was a little bit let down by this event. And more for me at this point, I'm kind of looking at this, um, I'm looking at this conference as a reset opportunity for D-Wave. I wanna see that they take control again of the conversation and of the narrative. They're clearly differentiating themselves from other quantum companies. You even saw on stage in the panel that Alan was pretty clear that um, I'm gonna have some IPA here. He was pretty clear that uh, 
D-Wave is not the same as other quantum companies. And there was some effort to lump all quantum efforts into one bucket. And with D-Wave's annealing approach, uh, has given them a uh, unique advantage. So we're so if we look back, we know that the stock was halted um, on the Nasdaq when B Wave announced it had achieved quantum supremacy in a real world optimization problem. So it wasn't too long ago that D Wave's stock was halted on the Nasdaq because of their release in Science Magazine claiming they have achieved quantum sim- supremacy in a real world optimization problem. And the results were published in the peer reviewed journal Science. So we, we, of course, have a video on that halt and we covered that. And, you know, in my my estimation of all of this, it does seem like D-Wave has some, uh, has had less pushback from, especially if we compare to like the Microsoft Meharawana 1 quantum chip, it seems like there's been a lot of scientific pushback on that particular breakthrough, but D-Wave seems to have brought the receipts um, I think the name of the game is differentiation. So that's what I want to see in this conference. I want to see D-Wave continue to further separate themselves from other quantum companies. Their approach is already unique, and that is their strength. Um, my, one of my favorite quotes of all time is the path less traveled. And it looks like um, the that D-Wave when, has taken that path less traveled and Currently, it's paying dividends for them as they do appear to be one of the leaders as a quantum computer pure play in 2025. So if we kind of bookend this conversation and this preview and this article, definitely go take a look at the article, watch the videos. If you haven't watched the videos, I've made it super easy. This looks good on mobile and desktop. Um, I have some background in the web development, so I work very hard to make the website a good experience. If you have any feedback or if you'd like to see anything, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, so I think the stakes are pretty high for D-Wave. I think the stock um, and the shareholders are definitely waiting for some positive news and positive catalysts. And we've seen definitely compression in the stock price um, over the past few days, especially with macroeconomic conditions and tariffs. So. We'll be there. I'm super excited to be there. Um, and let's jump over. So I even got a sweatshirt, got swag. No, I got the merch, right? Um, my girlfriend made this logo for me and I think it's so cool. So I got to wear it through the airport. I got to let people know that Quantum Bull is here. <laughs> um, so we're going to look now at um just a few shots from Kawhi. so first those of you who don't know i have some background of photography i've done it for a very long time i really enjoy it um this is one of the beaches in Kauai. um on one of our first night we got treated to a really nice sunset um the water is beautiful and um it was amazing so i just wanted to share a couple photos from the trip um my favorite thing about this beach in particular was how small it was and how secluded and just the the peace i felt when standing on this beach so this is a uh, more of a wave telephoto shot so um, it was pretty nice to see some big surf action and some big waves um with the cliffs in the background and even some birds um so super nice Another wave. I love wave photography. Um, it's my one of my favorite things to do. This one was kind of cool. Uh, this is a humpback whale. We went on a boat tour and we got uh, a chance to see um, some wildlife and uh, got the shot. It was a mom and calf traveling through the ocean. Um, this boat tour was crazy. We went with Blue Ocean in uh, Kauai. 
Hawaii, and they were insane, insanely good. Uh, this picture, I think, captures the excitement where we're speeding through a sea cave, um, and it was just insane. And then this is the Kalalo Lookout in Hawaii. Um, beautiful spot, a beautiful view. And this was a beautiful sunset. I loved uh, the waves crashing and how the sun kind of, you can see the sun behind the clouds and just gorgeous. Um, some light rays down on the Nepali cliffs and the Nepali coastline. And uh, here's a photo of some waves crashing on a beach in Kauai. And I loved how the water looked. The water was so calm for a lot of the trips. So it was really pretty. Um, so I went out, went out about three, four feet deep with my camera, risked it all, risked it all for, for the gram. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Anyway, I'm super, I'm looking forward to switching gears from photography and vacation mode to working hard at the Qubits conference um, to dig up some information because I know investors are very curious what is going on in this whole quantum computer world. So I'm going to be looking into what's happening, hopefully get to talk to some smart people, um, maybe get to see a quantum computer, get some cool images or video. Um, anyway, that's all I got for y'all. Talk to you soon.